Okay, hi, so in this video we're going to talk a bit about genetic engineering. Now, genetic engineering is a way that we can change the DNA of a given organism. Now, a very common example is for us to take a human gene, we can cut it out of a chromosome, and we can then insert it into a bacteria. Now, the bacteria will carry on producing the protein that we would have produced if the DNA was still inside our chromosomes. Okay, so you'll remember that DNA is stored in these structures known as chromosomes. This is just loads of DNA all compact together. Now, let's say, for example, that this blue gene here, so this blue section, which I've drawn a rectangle around here, is a gene. Let's say that we want this gene and we want to take it out. What we're going to do is we add enzymes. You don't need to know what these enzymes are at the moment. But we add enzymes and they will come in just like a pair of scissors and they'll cut this part of your DNA out. And so we then have that blue section of DNA. Let's just pretend it's this shade of blue. We've got this blue section of DNA that we have cut out. And this is our gene. Okay, so this is our gene. Now, in your book, it uses the example of insulin, so let's just go along with that. Let's say that this gene codes for insulin. So we need this gene in order for us to produce insulin. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to find a bacterial cell. So for simplicity, let's say this is a bacterial cell. I'm not going to draw the rest of the insides of the bacteria, but they have DNA found in these circular structures. So you've got these circular things all throughout. And these are called plasmids. Just like we have chromosomes, a plasmid is just another way of packaging your DNA. And rather than being in sticks like our chromosomes, these are found as circles. And so let's say we remove that plasmid. Therefore, we have a plasmid of DNA here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to insert our insulin gene into the plasmid. So we insert our gene, insert gene, into the plasmid. And this, again, you don't need to know uh, exactly which one, but this is just going to be using another enzyme. And so that means we are going to have a plasmid, which looks something like this. So we've got a plasmid, but it's now taken in our insulin gene, which is, of course, in blue. So we've got our insulin gene, now part of a plasmid. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put that plasmid back into some bacteria. So you've got this bacteria. The bacteria has got all of these plasmids, whatever. And we're going to take our plasmid, so our new plasmid, the one which is a hybrid, basically, and we're going to put it back in. So it doesn't have to be the same bacteria cell, obviously. We're going to put this into as many bacteria as we can. Now, the point is that these bacteria will then multiply. So these bacteria are going to multiply. There we go. There's another one. One more. There we go. So now, look, we've got loads of bacteria. And they've all taken up our new plasmid, which contains our insulin gene. And now if... We put these bacteria into a flask like so. So our bacteria are now in this flask. We allow them to grow. All of this, um, all of this material here is just growth medium. It allows them to grow. So the bacteria in the flask. Bacteria in flask. That bacteria now has the insulin gene. And so they will start to make insulin just like we would. And so the bacteria produce insulin and therefore we can take it back out. So that produces insulin. There we go. And this is great because the way that we used to have to obtain insulin was we'd take it out of pigs because pigs can produce it and it's pretty similar to human insulin. Obviously insulin can be used to treat diabetes. However, Pig insulin is not exactly the same as human insulin, and sometimes we would, our bodies would know that, and it would start to cause us problems. 
Whereas, if we are using the human insulin gene to produce insulin, this is going to be human insulin. So it's going to be human insulin, which of course is going to greatly reduce the amount of rejection and improve our acceptance of it. In this way, we can also produce loads of it because bacteria are way easier to grow in large numbers than pigs are. Okay, so that's the basis of genetic engineering, really. We are engineering a cell to produce a protein which it would not normally produce. And the way we do that is we add DNA, which is not from that cell or that organism. Okay, now this is using bacteria. There are some problems with this. Um, initially, because bacteria, while with insulin it works, cannot produce all human proteins, human proteins. And that's a problem because it means that other genes which we insert into bacteria, sometimes the bacteria will not be able to make them. And so we need to actually be able to put those genes into some other animals or some other plants. So bacteria is the easiest way, but sometimes we need to make things a bit more complex and use plants and animals. So plants and animals. We can genetically engineer them, so we can genetically engineer very early during development. During development. And there are a number of reasons why we do this. It's not only just to produce a protein so that we can take it out and sell it. That's not going to be viable really with, especially animals, it's not really going to be that viable most of the time. Sometimes it is. Remember we saw in the last video that we can produce things in cow's milk, which obviously is going to be of use. But sometimes we want to produce genes which are going to be beneficial to that animal or plant that we're engineering. For example, plants can be engineered, can be genetically engineered to resist things like herbicides. And the reason that's useful is because it means you can use herbicides to get rid of or kill all the plants that you don't want. Whereas the plants that you are farming obviously are resistant to herbicides and they're not going to die. The plants can also make, they can also make their own pesticides. So if we engineer a gene for a pesticide, into a plant, it means we don't have to spray them with artificially made pesticide. The plants produce their own pesticide and it will kill all the pests. And we can also add genes which make them bigger or give them a higher yield of crop. And that is obviously useful because for the same plants we're going to be getting more crops and therefore more money. Now, of course, in future, what some people are hoping is that genetic engineering, so genetic engineering could cure diseases. So if it was found that you had the disease for a certain gene, we could genetically engineer a human embryo to eradicate that disease. Currently, it's not possible. And the main reason really that it's not possible is because it's not legal. We are not actually allowed to mess with the genes of an embryo um, that's going to be born. So we can't actually do it um, because obviously there's a lot of ethical issues around it. We could be going against God. It's not natural. Uh, there could be side effects. If we genetically engineered an embryo and then it caused awful side effects, then obviously that would be a terrible thing to do. So uh, potential risks. So there are risks involved. And, there are also, and there's also uncertainty as to what would happen um, if we actually allowed it. So that's the reason why we can't do it at the moment, but a lot of people um, believe that it's something we should be able to do very soon. Now, there are always going to be skeptics, and quite rightly so. Um, in terms of genetic engineering, because it's a new science, we haven't really got too much data on it on the side effects 
For example, genetically engineered plants, there isn't too much data saying that they, they do anything negative to us. People um, in the news and in the media will report them as being unnatural and wrong, and a lot of people therefore are against them. However, there is that degree of uncertainty in that we don't know whether these genetically engineered crops are going to cause us long-term health problems. And so more study is needed um, onto those, uh, and therefore, at the moment, we can't make a calculated decision on whether they are good or whether there are sufficient negatives to say that it's not really very good. Okay, so any question you get, you need to be able to argue the fors and against of genetic engineering, and you need to know, of course, how it works. The only one you need to know how it specifically works is this one with the bacteria. With humans, with animals, with plants, it's going to be way more complicated and you don't need to know details. Okay, so I'm going to wrap up there. I hope that you found this useful. If you do have any questions, please do feel free to send me an email using the link below or leave a comment and I'll get back to you. But I look forward to seeing you in the next video.